what is going on everyone and today we are here for week eight of the fork on tires fix challenge track guide series and this week we are at donnington park national circuit so shorter version of the full layout obviously um a couple of I guess you could say not tricky corners, but corners that can make or break the lap time. Um, and just actually making sure that you nail that exit or the entry to mid speed to actually be able to carry the exit speed. It's going to be pretty crucial around here this week, especially at corners like Red Gate and Old Hairpin at turns one and four. They're probably your two biggest ones. And then obviously making sure you nail the the apexes at 9 and 10 for the final S's to get yourself back onto the start finish line so looking forward to getting into this one with you today um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that's been viewing our content reacting to our content subscribing to our channels uh, all our social media and stuff like that guys it, it means a lot and um, the growth that we've had in the last couple of weeks has been a little bit overwhelming and really exciting to be honest with you so thank you to everybody that's new to the channel I really appreciate it and uh, I hope you guys are getting a lot of content and a lot of uh, information out of these videos that are helping progress your racing week in week out so let's get into week eight at Donington Park National Circuit in the Mercedes AMG GT4 All right, guys, so now we're going to break down the lap. So as we're coming down into turn one, you can start to see we head right towards the left-hand side of the track, and we're just going to pause it right here for a second. So you can actually see I've placed the car over the blue, like, sort of merge line of the pit exit and the, the main straight. So I'm actually giving myself more track berth into the corner if that makes sense trying to widen the corner as much as possible to carry as much speed through it so as we actually come down i'm breaking a little bit further past this point it's probably like the second last white line on the blue bit i sort of also use the blue pit cone about a car length before but there's also a corner board on the inside of the circuit now it's hard to spot on a single monitor but if you've got triples or vr you'll actually you'll spot it out of the corner of your eye quite easily as well so that's just on the inside and i'm breaking in line with that as well so as we come into the corner nice big brake pressure you'll see i'm still over the pit line and then as we get to this point here you've got the white line across the track now i'm not I wouldn't say I'm turning at the white line, but you can see I start to prepare the turn and then I apex quite late into the corner as we get into the corner. You'll actually see I sort of run it deep and then start to apex it. Now, what I want to do is I want to clip the curb just in line with that little green and white striped tie wall. So see how I sort of clip the apex perfectly when I'm in line with that. And then from that point there, I can carry the speed out of the corner, pick up the throttle early. The car's going to slide right out to the escape curb, but it's not actually going to cause us any issues. Then as we come down the hill, fourth gear, fifth gear. Now, 
it's a slight lift, but it's not much. It's just to get the nose to bite back in, right? And then as we come off the curb, the car's going to center to the middle of the track. Now, I'm going to stop the car right at this point here. I'm stopping it a little bit before the braking marker just to show you. So you've got the corner, uh, the corner board on the left-hand side, and then you've got just the end of this curb here. So once I come off that little sort of, the little S kink down the hill drop, and I pass the end of this curb on the right-hand side, and the car's in a nice straight line, that's when I apply the brake. So just before the end of the curb, big brake pressure. And I try and diagonal the car at the corner, as you'll see in a second. Like as I come down, see how I sort of like diagonal the car, I'm sort of aiming for the corner board as I go in. I get to the curb and then I just start to turn straight away. So I actually turn at the corner extremely early. Now, the reason I do that is because of the momentum you're carrying through here. You need to start to rotate the car early. Otherwise, the car's just going to understeer for you and you're not actually going to get the, the car to rotate through the corner with the corner speed that you want to carry. So then as we leave the corner, the car slides right out to the edge of the curb. I actually nick the back end of that behind the curb part it's all fine as long as you don't go any further than that i cut the corner through here and then i let the car track out to the outside of the track and then i want to turn in just before the end of the the escape road part so you'll see like I'm already starting to turn the wheel, but I'm not really in a weird way. So as I get actually corner closer, once I get to the end of the escape road on the right, then I really start to rotate the car just a little bit more. Carry the speed through here, use a lot of curb here. Now, once we drop off this curb and we get to the end of this um, escape road on the left-hand side here, big brake pressure, back to third gear. Now, I kind of use the corner board again as you can see as a bit of a line but I'm sort of like on the left hand side of it and then as I turn in I turn in from a bit of a weird spot but I find I'm able to flow the car more if I do that if I go right to the edge of the road I, I feel like I make a lot more mistakes or I turn in too late and I get a bit of understeer so I sort of position myself a little bit more in the middle and it also just disincentivizes anybody from trying to stick a nose up the inside because I'm turning at the corner very early so especially if you get a bad run out of the the high speed kink coming up the hill um, this will just sort of deter anybody from having a real look turn in yet again just clip the apex just in line with the green um, and white striped wall so you'll see I just sort of pass the green and white wall as I nick the apex but I carry a lot of speed out of here as well use all the curb all right so this next corner is probably the most difficult because there is actually no brake markers for it so I'm just going to stop it right here so the way I kind of look at it right is it's very much a feel corner um, so the, when I'm sort of coming up to it, I know that when I'm about six to five car lengths from the crest of the hill, that's when I'm braking. So you'll see I brake now. So you see it's not a mile, but it's just enough to sort of get a pretty clear understanding. Um, but that's the best I can give you for here, guys. It's really just extending that brake marker until you find it. But the thing I will tell you about this corner is make sure you sacrifice your entry to really focus on your exit. Because if you drive the car too deep up the hill, you're going to bleed a lot of time down that back straight as well. So I always am probably on the more conservative side of coming up the hill to really then focus on the drive out of this corner. So as we turn at the top of the hill so once you get to the sort of the crest i start to turn the car a little tiny bit but i'm not really fully rotating until about five squares from the end of the uh, five blue squares from the end of the curb turn the car in you'll see i use a decent chunk of curb here a little bit over the grass the car slides to mid track but i'm actually off the throttle to let the nose bite back in so you can see i really want to clip this curb again on the exit out now it's pretty hard to get right to the curb especially when you're picking the throttle up early but you you want to try and get as tight as possible so then you can open the car up by the drs board or use all the curb on the exit and then run it down just speed it up a little bit till we get to the next braking marker. All right. So as you're coming into the last sort of corner, this is 
probably where you can lose a lot of lap time as well, really, in the scheme of things. Like, the hill corner onto the back straight is pretty crucial. The kink up the hill, and this is probably your third point of reference for the circuit where you can make or break a lap time. So what I'm looking for is you'll see the brake boards that are evenly spaced. I'm looking for the second one, so just over that sort of dip in the hill. So as we come up to it, so right at this point here, or just a little bit further, but I'm just stopping just before it so you can sort of see what the corner looks like. Nice big brake pressure in, right? So we're fifth gear. We want to get back to second gear to carry all the speed through here. Now, when you approach the curbings on these this final S, you can use a fair bit of red curb on it, but I'd be very careful with how much you use. So you'll see in my lap here, so big brake pressure right up against the white line past the last brake board, and then I start to turn the car at the corner pretty quickly. So you can see I'm already, the car's already lunging in at the corner. You'll see here I turn over quite a lot of the red curb on the first one because it's a bit lower. It's not as aggressive. And you'll see here the car bounces, but it sets pretty good, right? And then I use just a tiny little bit of curb here, like not... Not as much as I just used it the first one, but it's more like I just ride it to help rotate the car. The car steps off of it. I use all the escape curb as I'm coming up. And uh, we fire it up over the start finish line. And there you go, guys. So that is your walkthrough track guide for the Falkland Tires GT4 Fixed Challenge track guide series. I hope this has helped you. Good luck for week eight's racing. We've got four weeks to go, guys. We're into our drop round. So I hope you guys are having a good season. And uh, keep pushing. Thanks, guys.